Hello students, welcome back. Mr. L here again with the final two part, <clears throat> final part, finally the final part, although it's gonna be in two parts, just so we can keep ourselves a bit more organized. And there's a bit more complex and some new things going on in this. So we're gonna do it one step at a time. Let's just dive in to creating this scoreboard without any more ado. New subclass, scoreboard. <clears throat> I'm gonna pop open the code here. We're gonna think about what information does our scoreboard need? Now it's a little bit more complicated than our health bar, which is just a, rep a rectangle representing how much health is left. Our scoreboard's actually going to have some text information in it. So we need some things like a label that it's going to have uh, some text information to be displayed on the screen. I'm actually gonna give it some generalization. For example, I'm gonna allow it to set the font size. I'm gonna allow some ability to change the text color and the background color. And finally, I need to have a, some stored information about the score in the game to be able to work with. Talk through why all these things are necessary as we work through the logic here. For now, let's get our constructor up and running. Now, this scoreboard is going to be initialized with it, the initial state of the score. Or maybe, there's times, maybe we have multiple levels later in our game and we want the scoreboard to be set in the next level with the score from the previous level being continued. Doing this allows that to be done. So I'm going to, first of all, set this score to be equal to whatever score that I send here. Let's initialize the font size here. We could actually accept parameters for this, but for now we're just going to set it to, let's say, 24. Let's set our text color uh, to red for now. Let's set our background color. Now let's remember we can actually create our own custom colors. And here, I'm gonna be creating a fully transparent background color, just so that it looks <clears throat> kind of seamlessly a part of the world. And now I'm gonna do something a tiny bit new here. I wanna set this label of my scoreboard to this score. <clears throat> but we're gonna see a problem here. If I try and set the label to score, there's a problem. Score is an integer and label is a string. <clears throat> I can't just print out as uh, text information a number directly. I have to actually convert this into a string. In Java, we have a really easy way of doing this called concatenation. Concatenation works like this. I'm going to write for label an empty string and add score to it, and we're done. Here's how this logic plays out. This label is going to be equal to, it's looking for the information that it's equal to, it's equal to an empty string of no information, plus score added onto it. But putting the string in first, it's Java's going to interpret this as me saying, I want this number added on as a part of this string. And so it converts it to a string automatically for us. And then our label can actually be a string to be able to be written out. Awesome. All right. This scoreboard is useless to us if it can't be updated as the game goes by and as things die. So I'm going to add a method called update to this. And how is this going to work? Well, our score is going to increase by some value. Let's call this change. So we're gonna, oop, going to take in a number for how much the score is going to be increased by. And now that we have changed it, I need to actually update my label to the new score. To do that, I need a new method to set the label, a setter. And it's going to take some text that it's going to set this label to. So up here, when I update, when I have a new score, I need to set the label to this new score. The label is expecting a string. Score is an integer. That's okay. We know how to deal with this now. Set label. An empty string plus score is going to set that string uh, properly. So this is going to update when it needs to, and then it's going to reset the label of our scoreboard to this text. Now, this isn't gonna be everything that we need this to do because we actually, just having a new label doesn't reconstruct the object to set the actual information from it. I actually need something to be creating and 
updating the image that we have here so that actually the information is processed properly. Um, we're actually not going to be using an act method here. So I'm just going to erase this to get our screen less busy. Whenever we update an image, we want to get access to this image. And in this case, however, I actually don't have an image for this made yet. Each time, I'm going to be creating a new image with the new information. If we go back over into our API, to our constructors for our Greenfoot image, <coughs> we'll see that we have a Greenfoot image constructor that has the string, create an image with the given string drawn as text, perfect for this particular implementation, with a font size, a foreground and background color. This is why we created those private variables for these different uh, variables here. So when we're creating this new Greenfoot image, we're going to be starting by sending it the text of our label. And then we're going to send it the current font size we have, the text color that we have, and the background color that we defined above. And we're simply going to set the image of this object to the updated image. And the naming in my head was different than the naming on the page. I sometimes name things a bit differently here. So, what do we have to work with now? We are, my wife just got home, so if you hear some background noise, that's her carrying my kid up. Anyway, back to the lesson. In here, we now have something that will update our image for us. We need this method to run any time new information is added. New information is added when we construct it in the first place. New information is, well, when we update, we set a label. When the label has been changed, we need to update the image to take that into account. If you wanted to add the customization for some of the different attributes, you could add setters like this for your font size, your text color, your background color. For now, I'm happy with this being the implementation that we work with in terms of just setting the text and allowing that to change based off of the information that we're getting from our interactions in the game. So there is an extra layer of complexity here that we'll get to in a sec. But for now, I'm just going to begin to add the scoreboard to the preparation of my world in the first place. I, in this case, I'm going to be adding it first as a private variable. This is very important. I didn't have to for my health bar because my health bar is going to interact with things in a different way. It interacts with the health of our actor directly. But the scoreboard actually needs to um, be accessed in a slightly different way. So I need to make the world aware of the scoreboard in general so that other things can access it through our world. And I am going to define this scoreboard down here in my preparation. It's a new scoreboard with an initial score of zero. I'm going to add this to my world. Add scoreboard. I'm going to add it to the middle of my screen. Get width. And then I'm going to use the same thing for height I did for my health bar. I am going to get, in a slightly different way though, I'm going to get the image of my scoreboard. I'm going to get its height, the height of the image, and divide that by two. A few layers of things. A couple, uh, yeah, a couple dots, I've seen different layers, but this is totally acceptable. One of the ways I can get a generalized access to the actual height. And now we see this appearing in my world. I got this, the world size isn't exactly represented when I squish the screen in here, but we'll see if I pull this over a little bit, that that should be dead in the center of my screen, nicely set down with my initial score of zero. So how do we actually get the information that this needs to be able to adapt and adjust? It's its value. I want you to think about this for a sec. What might I need to adjust in the other parts of my code to be able to get this scoreboard updated and changed? I'll let you think about that for a sec and then come back and join me. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you figured out that the score should be based off of an asteroid being destroyed. I'm going to jump into my asteroid code here. In my asteroid code, what 
what is the time or where is the place where I would like score to be incremented or added to? It's going to be when an asteroid is destroyed in my game. So in the code here, before I remove this object, I'm going to add in some code for adding to score when an asteroid is destroyed. Oh, poor kiddo. I know he wants this lesson to be over too. We'll get there quick. To be able to change the value, I need to be able to access my scoreboard. However, there's a problem. I can't access my scoreboard directly through my asteroid because the scoreboard isn't like a general class. It's a specific object that's created in my world. So you might think about trying to access it in like get world dot get scoreboard. But I don't have a method for getting scoreboard. I don't have any way of accessing that scoreboard's information. I can't just do, go dot. Now, what, what did I name it here? I named it scoreboard down here. I can't just go dot scoreboard and dot something and accessing it through its method that way. I can't just access the object directly because it is a private object. And that's the way that it needs to be. I have to create a getter to get the information for my scoreboard from my world class. That's a nice little workaround that we can do that will work here just fine. So I'm going to have a getter called get scoreboard that's going to return something of the type scoreboard. And it's simply going to return the scoreboard that I had to define in a general sense up here. And in particular, it's going to return this particular scoreboard or whatever current version is in the game. So now in Asteroid, when I go back over here, I'm actually able to access a method in my world. Now, I'm going to do this in a bit more of a sophisticated way. I am going to call, I'm going to create an, a local version of my world to get all the information from it. So Galaxy class called my world is going to be the Galaxy version of get world. So I'm getting my world information, telling Java it's, it is the Galaxy object type, gather that information as a Galaxy object called my world. And now that I have a local version of it, I am able to create access to my scoreboard. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a local scoreboard that is e equal to the scoreboard that exists currently in my world. This is how I indirectly access information from my scoreboard through kind of like a third party. I can't access it directly. I have to request access to scoreboard through Galaxy, which itself accesses scoreboard information. So indirect access, here's how I set that up, down over here. So now I actually have direct access at this point to my scoreboard. It's the same thing at this point of actually being in here and writing direct code for whatever this object is. So in this scoreboard, what do I want to do? Well, I want to update my score with the change amount. So I'm going to update it by whatever the score I want the, the value of an asteroid to be. I could just type in a magic number here, or why don't I up here define a new int? Private int uh, value. What is its score worth? And just to keep things simple, let's make it 10. Each asteroid is worth 10 points for value. And so I'm going to update this with value amount each time an asteroid is destroyed. And then the object will be removed from the world like normal. Let's test this out and see how it goes. I should be seeing that each time I destroy an asteroid. Oh, getting hit. Let's make sure we kill me before I die. Not playing too well right now. Let's get this thing done. 10 points. Let's get another one. See if it updates again. 20 points. Each asteroid that I kill is going to update my score by 10 points. It should work for every single asteroid of whatever size. You could further customize this by making different size asteroids worth different amounts of points. You could have the score reset at different times. There's lots of room for adaptation and 
extra layers to this. Awesome, so we have lots of visual feedback information. My health is getting pretty low. I have one hit left in me. My score is 70. If you are someone who wants to make a two-player game, you could have scores for different players popping out here. There's lots of ways you can customize this further. You could even just challenge yourself or have some fun with friends once your game is in this state to see who can get the highest score in your particular version of the game. That would be a very reasonable thing to do as you test things out. But there we go. I'm going to be releasing one more short video after this where I overview some of the, my expectations for your own projects that you're creating now that we've gotten tons of logic set up. But here we are. From this, you should be able to mimic my game and then make an, a version of your own that at the very least mimics all the elements I've shown you, and then your job is to extend its functionality. In, this next, in the next video will be a brief overview of what I want you to be working towards.